Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban said on Friday during a radio interview in Budapest that if U.S. President-elect Donald Trump had won the U.S. election in 2020 there wouldn't have been a war in Ukraine. People say a lot of things about Trump, including people who don't like him, but there's one thing that no one questions, which is that he does not launch wars, Orban added. He added that, strong leadership from the U.S. would have ended the war in Ukraine. During his campaign, Trump said he could end the war in Ukraine, now well into its third year, in a single day. Ukraine and many of its European backers fear that this means a peace on terms favorable to Russian President Vladimir Putin and involving the surrender of territory. European allies in NATO hope to convince Trump that if he helps to negotiate any peace, it should be done from a position of strength, for both Ukraine and the US. Orban, widely seen as having the warmest relations with Putin among all EU leaders, has routinely blocked, delayed or watered down EU efforts to extend assistance to Kiev and to sanction Moscow over its war. He has consistently pushed for a ceasefire but without detailing what it would mean for Ukraine's statehood or territorial integrity, or the potential security implications for Europe and the United States. Azután történnek, hogy Donald Trumpot ismét megválasztották az Amerika. A háború két évéről beszélek, és azt is mindenki tudja, hogyha 2020-ban Donald Trump nyert volna az Egyesült Államokba, akkor ez a két év, ez a, ez a Lidérc nyomásos két év meg sem történt volna, nem lett volna háború, mert lett volna olyan erős vezetője Amerikának, aki kellő időben megkötötte volna a szükséges megállapodásokat. Ez elmaradt. A kormányfői folytatják a megbeszéléseket. A tárgyalásoknak külön... A fronton a helyzet nyilvánvaló, tehát katonai vereség van. Az amerikai ki fognak szállni ebből a háborúból. Ezt is nem fogják bátorítani a háborút, nem fogják azt mondani, hogy a háború jó dolog. Donald Trumpról sok mindent szoktak mondani, azok is, akik nem kedvelik. De egy dolgot senki sem kérdőjelez meg. Ez pedig az, hogy ő nem indít háborút. Orbán Viktor miniszterelnököt. Around 50 European leaders, including Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta, will be reassessing their transatlantic relations in the hope that the Donald Trump's second U.S. presidency will avoid the strife and political pitfalls of his first administration. Arriving for a summit of European leaders in the Hungarian capital, Budapest, Ruta said he was looking forward to working with Trump again. When he was president, he was the one in NATO who stimulated us to move over the 2% this is very much his doing, his success, he told reporters. He said a major topic at the summit would be the prospect of Russia, North Korea, Iran, China working together. We have to work not only the threat of Russia but also the fact that these four countries work together, he said, which would pose a threat to Europe and the US. Further compounding an already complicated situation, Germany, Europe's troubled economic juggernaut, sank into political crisis. After German Chancellor Olaf Scholz fired his finance minister. It raises the specter of elections in a few months and yet another standoff between the emboldened hard right and the establishment parties in Europe. Ruta said he had confidence in Scholz and Germany's role on the world stage. He said his main concern was the impact of North Korean troops in Russia who he said were deployed in return for Russia supplying North Korea with the newest technological developments. Russia is delivering the latest technology into North Korea in return for North Korean help with the war against Ukraine and that is a threat not only to the European part of NATO but also to the US mainland, he said. At the summit Zelensky is expected to make another plea for more aid as his country fends off Moscow's invasion. The timing is laden with significance as Trump has vowed to end the war, within 24 hours, of being elected, something leaders in Kiev interpret as an impending evaporation of U.S. support. Hi, good morning. Oh, of course, uh, I want to congratulate again uh, President Trump uh, upon his re-election. Uh, it was really uh, a huge success for him, including capturing the House and the Senate. I look forward to work with him again. Uh, when he was president, he was the one in NATO who stimulated us to move over the 2%. And now, also thanks to him, 
And NATO, if you take out the numbers of the US for a moment, is above the 2%. And I think very much that is his doing, his success, and we need to do more. We know this. Um, today, very much on my mind, in this meeting, is what is happening now with North Koreans being deployed in Russia. And what we see more and more is that North Korea, Iran, uh, China, and of course Russia are working together. Um, working together against Ukraine. But at the same time, Russia has to pay for this. And one of the things they are doing is delivering technology to North Korea, which is now threatening uh, the, in the future the mainland of the US, uh, continental Europe, uh, but also our partners in the Indo-Pacific, uh, Japan for example, and the Republic of Korea. I'm sure that when it comes to defense, when it comes to um, foreign policy, uh, that Germany will be able to conduct uh, his, its foreign policy, uh, fulfill its obligations in terms of defense, etc. So I'm not worried about that. Olaf Scholz is a strong leader. I know him very well. So I think he will navigate during the coming months, making sure that uh, Germany plays its role at the world stage. Thank you. We have to work not only uh, the threat of Russia, uh, but also the fact that these four countries work together and that now, uh, very soon, we will see that also the US itself is under threat from these newest technological developments, thanks to Russia giving its um, latest insights and technology to the North Korea. Russia is delivering the latest technology uh, into uh, North Korea in return for North Korean help with the war against uh, Ukraine. And this is a threat not only to the European part of NATO, but also to the US mainland. And that means that the Indo-Pacific and the Euro-Atlantic, but particularly also within NATO, US, Canada, and the European part of NATO, we have to work together. He's right